Manu Ginobili just recently announced his retirement at age 41 on August 27, 2018. After 16 seasons, 4 championships, and 2 all-star appearances, all with the San Antonio Spurs, Ginobili's basketball legacy and greatness will always be cherished and remembered. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. When you think about the best shooting guards in the last 15 years, guys like Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, James Harden, Tracy McGrady, and Ray Allen often comes to mind. Manu Ginobili's names often forgotten amongst the best shooting guards. Sure, he's not as talented and athletic as many of those guys, but his success and unselfishness not only makes him one of the best players all time, but also one of the best winners in NBA history. Drafted 57th overall in the 1999 NBA Draft, it's now safe to say that Ginobili ended up the most successful NBA player in that class, arguably the best one, and that's a very talented draft class right there. Manu started his pro career with the Argentinian Basketball League in 1995, also spent a couple seasons in Italy after he was drafted, dominated the EuroLeague. Ginobili was put in an excellent situation to succeed and took full advantage of it playing with San Antonio where he officially started his NBA career in the 2002-2003 season as a backup point guard under Steve Smith. Didn't get off to the best start, averaged just 7.6 points his first full season in over 20 minutes of playing time as a a 25 year old. As the season progressed, Manu continued improving, winning Western Conference Rookie of the Month in March, named all rookie second team for the 60 win Spurs. Manu first made a huge name for himself after a stellar semi finals performance where he came off the bench, averaged almost 12 points over two steals to knock off the three time defending champion Lakers. From then on, it was clear that the 6'6 shooting guard was going to be part of an incredible San Antonio Big 3. There was no way the Spurs were going to knock off Kobe and Shaq's Lakers without the help of Manu. A couple weeks after, captured his first NBA championship that season, knocking off the Nets in 6 games. Manu quietly continued to play a pivotal role for the Spurs dynasty throughout the 2000s. After averaging a little over 29 minutes during his second season, put up nearly 13 points, 4.5 rebounds, almost 4 assists, one of of his breakout NBA moments was his epic duel with Kobe Bryant on November 6, 2003, where Duncan and Parker were both out with injuries. Even though San Antonio lost that game, Kobe, the best shooting guard and probably the best player at the time, dropped 37, while Ginobili burst out scoring 33, only a few games into his second season. He simply never backed down from challenges, constantly shined at the brightest moments. After losing to Kobe's Lakers in the semis, Manu would get the last laugh in the summer of 2004, started off with a game winner in the Olympics, leading Argentina to an 83-82 win over Serbia on opening day. 12 days later, Ginobili continued his dominance, dropping 29 points in his most memorable game outside the NBA to knock off the United States 89-81 in the Olympic semifinals before winning gold. One of the most shocking upsets in Olympics basketball history, that US a team features superstars like Ginobili's teammate Tim Duncan, the Sixers' Allen Iverson, young players in LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony. That upset is still talked about to this very day as one of the most shocking stories in professional sports. Manu's basketball success continued, earning his first All-Star appearance in the 04-05 season, averaged 16 points, was the clear-cut second best player on his team, forced the Suns with a career-high 48 points on January 21, 2005, rallying from a 17-point fourth-quarter deficit, leading to a 128-123 overtime win. The 6'6 shooting guard continued to punish Phoenix in the conference finals, putting up 22.2 points, over 6 rebounds, nearly 5 assists with 2 steals. But his most memorable series came in the biggest stage where Manu would not let his team lose against the tough defensive minded Pistons, scored 11 of his 23 points in the fourth quarter of game 7, fearlessly attacked defensive player of the year Ben Wallace, putting up nearly 19 points that series where many believe he deserved finals MVP. Two years later, Ginobili won his third NBA championship in just playing 5 seasons in the league, also had a stellar finals performance in an easy sweep over Cleveland. Manu would have his best statistical season in 2008, where he won the 6th man of the year award Board, putting up 19 and a half points, almost four boards, four and a half assists, shot 40% from downtown. Even though his team lost to Kobe Slakers in the conference finals, Ginobili's most memorable game that season came against the epic duel with LeBron James, 
On February 13, 2008, the King had an amazing 39 points, but the night belonged to Manu, who had a career-high 8 three-pointers, dropped 46 in a 112-105 win. Also one of the best closers in his prime, nailing the go-ahead game-winning jumper against the Timberwolves 8 days later, where he finished with 44 points. One of Manu's best playoff moments came from Game 1 of the first round in 08, banking the go-ahead game-winner with 1.8 seconds left in the double overtime win over Phoenix, one of the best games I ever watched. Of course, who can forget about the time Manu knocked down the loose bat in the middle of a game? One of the strangest things that's ever happened on a basketball court, and one of the greatest bloopers as well in NBA history. Manu would make his last All-Star appearance in 2011, where he led his team to 61 wins, averaging 17.4 points. Despite all his amazing accomplishments as a former second round pick, the Argentinian also overcame tremendous adversity, where he had a forgettable, nightmarish 2013 NBA Finals performance. The 35 year old struggled mightily, was a minus 21 in game 6, shot 2 of 5 from the field, finishing with just 9 points, missed a clutch free throw that probably would have clinched the title for San Antonio, thought about retirement after the series, not sure if he was going to be effective again, that was the most difficult time of Ginobili's NBA career, but played 5 more years after, bounced back with a vengeance with a solid performance in the 2014 finals, putting up 14 and a half points, had an incredible monster dunk on Tris Bosch in transition, which pretty much delivered the dagger, knocking off Miami in dominating fashion in an easy 5 game series. Came off the bench for all 262 regular season games in his final 4 seasons, left every ounce of energy on the line with another heroic moment in the 2017 semifinals, blocking James Harden's 3 point attempt that could have tied the game. Whether it was his unique Euro step, relentless work ethic, or smooth left handed jumper, Manu's versatile all around game makes him one of the greatest players to ever play the game of basketball. His sacrifice and commitment to doing whatever was best for his team is what I'll remember most about Ginobili, who averaged 13.3 points, 3.5 rebounds, 3.8 assists in the 1057 total regular season games. If you look at his per 36 numbers of 18.8 points, 5 rebounds, almost 5.5 assists, and 2 steals, it's pretty amazing. Sure, he could have played more minutes and averaged over 20 points for a bunch of seasons, but as a team first player, all he simply cared about was winning, winning, and winning. Ginobili made the postseason every single year of his 16 year career with San Antonio. With that said, it's clear that Manu Ginobili is one of the most underrated and underappreciated players in NBA history. In a couple years, there is no doubt in my mind Manu Ginobili will be in the Basketball Hall of Fame and is one of the most beloved players of all time. Capping off a 23 year professional historic career, whether it was in Italy, Argentina, or with San Antonio, Ginobili's basketball legacy will always be embraced around the world. But the thing I'll miss most about Manu Ginobili on TNT Ginobili! Ginobili! Manu Ginobili! 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 Thank you so much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on Manu Ginobili's NBA career? What's your favorite memory of Manu? Is he a top 10 shooting guard all time? Let me know in the comments below. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, subscribe to my content. More great stuff coming soon. See you next time.